You'd get that just explosion of light in your brain when it just, something transcends reality. And that's, mm. it's one of these things, it's like having just an obsession that you almost couldn't choose not to do it. And that comes with it many wonderful, amazing, deeply satisfying, inspiring things. In some ways, it's also an awful affliction that I wouldn't necessarily wish on anyone. Plenty of both. I was 18 uh, in first year, Melbourne University. There was a student magic club on campus. I just saw, for the first time in my life, good, powerful, really incredible close-up magic. And it was still, to this day, one of the most amazing things I've ever seen in my entire life. And just became just curious, fascinated, to, what the hell was that? I need to learn more about this. I'm gonna try and make it look like the poker chips move from here over to here, uh, but without you seeing the go across. I'm a full-time jigsaw puzzle designer, is my main profession. The pandemic changed a lot of things. And there should, in theory, be no way to do that so quick you can't see it, uh, unless you do that. I've realized personally, I love having magic as a part-time career. So again, you do the, the events that you want to do because you're excited, not because you've got to pay rent each month. It's a wonderful thing. Well, it's going to take the joy out of it, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And it really did for me for 10 years. It was really rough. That was too fast, I know. So second chance to see it, slightly slower. Still too fast. Now, ultra slow motion would look like that. That's too slow, so instant replay. And then finally, Straight across. It's a thing that happens every three years. It's a huge thing. Wow, this is just insane. I quit competing at magic competitions and I only went back in for the 2022 one because I had this thing I'd been working on to do for the general public, for normal people, that I went, actually, this might also accidentally played this thing and um, ended up winning it. Which was really surprising. Uh, and I'm still, honestly, it still hasn't fully sunk in yet. Why do you think you won? <sighs> well, <laughs> that's the question I wasn't expecting. Um, one of the reasons, I think, was there was a line, actually, that someone said in an article, thanks, I felt like a kid again. Final chip for realsies this time. <laughs> Let me see. Yeah, it's a word, it's my vernacular. <laughs> the thing is, though... And as a magician, it's very rare you get to feel that. And there was actually a moment a few months before it where I got a couple of friends in the US to help me script. And one of them said, okay, well, if you want to try and impress the magician judges, this would be a good theme to take with it. And I remember going, yeah, I think you're right. That would, but that's not why I'm there. I'm just trying to make this thing beautiful. I don't care if the magicians like it or not. I was just there to sing my song. And if anyone heard it, that was not on me anymore. And I think in that freedom to just focus on what I really, <laughs> God damn it, I get emotional even thinking about it. Yeah, just do the thing that I really cared about. In theory, you can do, whether you call it magic or illusion or whatever else, it can be done with theoretically anything. Uh, it's not the object that matters, because again, the, the medium of the illusion is literally the mind of the observer. Uh, we can't make stuff disappear or reappear or change. We can do things through a lot of effort and craft and skill and ingenuity and the work of people over decades and centuries um, that looks amazing to you. This is not it. This is just me sticking tape to my fingers. Um, we'll get to that in a second. But it is, as we refine these techniques over building on the work of, again, generations before us to try and give you that subjective experience of something extraordinary that did not really happen, but damn can feel or look like it happened. And right now you're just looking at a bunch of tape stuck together, which isn't very amazing. But in a minute, your sense of perception and reality are gonna diverge. And in that divergence, as the cognitive dissonance collapses, you get that experience of astonishment and what we figuratively refer to as magic. After FISM and the World Championships, I'm sort of thinking of dipping more of a toe back into pro magic now that there might be more of a market. It might be a bit smoother this time. 
We'll see. I'm in the middle of a you know mild existential crisis about that. We'll see how it's going. Stay tuned.